Greetings one and all. Here's a video, a year in the making, getting this very early IBM compatible fully operational. We left things with a number of issues, and in the meantime there's been much confusion and frustration. To get things up and running, there's been many things to do. Firstly, much research on correct config settings. Then, new capacitors for the power supply. A lot, and I mean a lot of cleaning things, including the innards for the floppy drive and the keyboard, and also straight up removing the hard disk and its controller card. Here's how it went down. First on the menu, we've got the disassembly of the floppy drive. As you can see, this is a remarkably complicated piece of kit compared to some of the uh, later three and a half inch floppy drives I've taken to pieces. There's just so many more bits, not only physically, but also in the electronics. Loads of connectors, boards, you know, giant motors. The thing's a beast. So at this point, the reason it doesn't boot from floppy is that it's stuck waiting for the hard disk. Here's where I'm missing a bit of footage trying out the floppy drive on my Pentium 2 and discovering that the thing's out of alignment. Uh, it was giving me some, you know, weird errors and I correctly guessed it was out of line. So to fix the disk issue, my best guess is that this is out of alignment because I undid these two screws that hold the top, that which hold the head on. And yeah, now it's everything's clicking and whirring and it seems relatively healthy, but it says the disks aren't formatted. So I'm going to try and adjust this and maybe I'm hoping I'll be able to see the like dirt tide mark once I loosen this and line it up again. Um, also, interestingly, I'm not sure if this is single-sided or, or not, but uh, what I do think it does, I was worried it didn't come down close enough when it, it came down because the head doesn't didn't actually seem to be touching the disc. And I thought, oh, that's why it's only working when it's upside down because the disc sort of presses on it. But I think the reason there's a big chunk of copper here is that this is has an electromagnet because there's a definite chunk when it first starts reading. I think it pulls the, the head down with an electromagnet to make good contact. So hopefully if I can get it to line up, all will be well. Hmm, so slight issue. Yes, there's a little bit of a tide mark from the dirt, but the thing on top moves as well. <laughs> so that's not going to let me line it up. Okay, I had a look at the video I originally took before I took the thing to bits and tried to roughly line it up on that basis. What do we think my odds are? <laughs> God damn! I am... Wow, I am frankly amazed. Okay, well I'm not surprised it can't read Drive C because it's FAT32, which I'm sure this doesn't understand. I wonder how accurate you have to be to have made that work because there was m like a couple of millimetres at least of adjustment not only backwards and forwards, but also sideways, so you could have it at an angle, you could... <laughs> uh, I am surprised. Next up, a recap for the PSU. Slightly unusual design with two boards. Okay, you're going to use the Molex connector to get uh, like a 5 and 12 volt into here. I've mounted everything back inside, but it's not connected, so uh, the fan's on there, so it has some load now, but I don't know if it's going to count if the fan is not, uh, not 12 or 5 volt. I think it might be mains voltage. So we'll see if we get a reading. Also not particularly useful. Let's try the uh, other connection, and then we'll try it with some load. N neither of them appear to have dangerously high licking outputs. And uh, I think the hard disk's already dead on this as well. Okay, see uh, if this gives us 5 or something. That was seemed like it was climbing towards 12. Alright, well that looks like 5. Okay, so now the hard disk is connected. Hmm, that is a... Uh... That's a bit low for a 12 volt line, isn't it? Just about within 10%. Ah, oh, so that's interesting. So the little noise when it starts up and goes boop, 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 actually came out of the hard disk then, because nothing else is connected. I had assumed that was the PC speaker. I guess it's time to...
plug everything else back in. Okay, got everything plugged in now, except the floppy disk drive. So I'm curious if it will regulate better with more load on things. Uh, so I can use the, the power connector for the floppy drive to get my measurement on the multimeter. Um, one thing I do not love is that the uh, connections into here for the CRT, which is probably thousands of volts, and the uh, 12 volt, uh, the connectors look identical to me. Uh, luckily they have what they are written on them, but boy that would be a bad mistake to make. <laughs> so, fingers crossed, now that the main board and everything is together, uh, no bad things are going to happen, but I mean it all looks good. For now, here goes. Hey, that's actually much better. That's a that's like solid, isn't it? Let's check the uh, five volts as well, just for fun. Oh, perfect. Okay, seems like a good result. Roundup so far. We have a working floppy disk. I figured out that the hard disk must be removed to allow the booting from floppy, and the disk's probably dead. All the RAM is working when the jumpers are set correctly. And the power supply has got new capacitors and is thoroughly tested. That was all the problems, right? Wrong! It's at this point I discover that the keyboard doesn't work on every key. This right here is why people never finish these projects. The PC is actually all working apart from the hard disk, but it's still taken a lot of time to get this far. Oh, that's not good. Some of the keyboard doesn't work. <laughs> I could have sworn I had made that work before, though. Step one, test the cable and the connectivity. So I'm putting a probe on the uh, inside of the keyboard and then all the way back through into the motherboard. This way I can test the whole cable and the interface between the two connectors in one go. Uh, next one down should be blue. Yes, okay, and so on. Let's try the others. So we've definitely got contact all the way through to the motherboard, no problem with the cable, so either it's a problem with the keyboard, which is probably the most likely, or it's a problem on the motherboard. Here's the PCB for the keyboard. Um, it's not a, a switch based keyboard, it is membrane, uh, which is a little bit disappointing on an old uh, computer, you always want the nice clicky clacky. It's pretty grungy. It doesn't look too awful to be honest. I don't think the cleanliness is probably the reason why some of the keys don't work. Uh, all the actual contact pads look look relatively good and then that's not disintegrating you know on the underneath of these keys. So I guess it's not technically a membrane because they're all individual aren't they? But uh, you know it's, uh, it's not switches anyway. It's these pushy things. So, I mean, now it's in pieces, I can probably I can probably clean it. Well, everything is lovely and clean now. So, I've also given the chips a wiggle and stuff. I'm going to check over all the traces and stuff and put it back together. <gasps> it, oh, it did fix it. Oh, man. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they're a bit... Some of the keys are a bit grumpy. Amazing! So, this is completely working now. The hard disk didn't work, but everything else is good. Just spotted the uh, 84 on that chip. Maybe the keyboards was in stock for a while, or uh, didn't originally belong to this computer. There we have one fully operational, near original, IBM compatible PC. So after all of that faff, uh, the keyboard was dirty, and boy it feels so much better <laughs> now it's all been through the sink, uh, and the hard disk didn't work. Um, and other than that, it's just been cleaning basically. Now it's also got a recapped power supply, whether or not we needed to do that, I don't know. But uh, it's nice to have it done, should keep it reliable for uh, many years to come hopefully. And I've got a big stack of five and a quarter inch discs to go through. How far I'll get without a fixed disc, 
I don't know. Might need to get one of those XTCF cards so I can uh, have a little compact flash based hard disk in here. But uh, I did find this one disk in the pile that works. Something called uh, Sidekick, which seems to run in the background. So like you can be at your A prompt and press Control Alt and you get a little list of like notepad, calculator. So that's pretty cool. So I can just, uh, what, use the numpad? Yeah, nice. So yeah, let's see what I can do with this next. Uh, one more machine fully operational. And boy, isn't that a nice change. Thanks for watching along. Have a great uh, rest of your week, weekend, wherever you're at. And I'll see you around next time.